I am often asked, a spec what is, objectively, the strongest ship in the game? And this is a very relative question with several answers, as there is quite a lot of research done on the Paradox subforums for Stellaris where people are wondering this exact same question. Now, I'm saying relative because there is two iterations of the game as of making this video. Of course, Utopia is coming out uh, relatively soon as of making this. However, um, Leviathans does add a bunch of ship modifiers which allow you to build even stronger ships. And of course, this is the Dragon Scale armor and the enigmatic items such as shields and power. For the sake of this little thought experiment, we're going to omit those until the very end. Now, in general, the generally approved idea behind battleships is that you would generally want to have a spinal mount cannon. In general, this would be the Tachyon Lance. It's big, it's blue, it does a lot of damage, it uh, ignores 90% of armor, but it does less shield damage. But it's not important for this particular thought process. Uh, the artillery core and artillery stern add four large weapons to them, uh, which overall, in combination with where you would normally have medium weapons, uh, it kind of balances things out. And the artillery core, as well as artillery stern, do add four of these slots, and very powerful stuff indeed. Of course, you have your low slots as well that come with this, and this is all to balance out the, f the general design of the ship. Now, just to cut to the chase, what is the overall best battleship in 1.4. In 1.4, the best best battleship basically consists of a combination of hyper shields, large zero point reactors, a crystal forge plate, and the shield capacitor. Now, the crystal forge plate is a bit of an interesting item. You don't necessarily always get it. The crystal forge plating comes from the crystal entities that float off in space, and there's two different variations of this item. There's the crystal infused plate and the crystal forge plate. Now, if you only have access to the crystal infused plate, it's generally just to replace it with another shield capacitor because of the way the items uh, stack to each other. Basically, an extra shield capacitor is generally better than not having a crystal forge plate. Overall, though, the question then is, why plasma and why kinetic? Well, one, if you have two kinetic weapons, they will all target the same target if you have a group of, a group of battleships, which is why I like to generally, when fighting an uh, enemy that is on par with myself, to have multiple fleets because they will target multiple targets. And the initial volley, also generally referred to as the alpha volley, will annihilate the first target. But with multiple targets, however, you will allow annihilate multiple initial targets. And that's kind of important here. Plasma is generally considered to be the least counterable item in the game in terms of weapons. It does 90% of armor damage, but only 20% shield damage reduction. Uh, it's, it's pretty decent. Uh, sh uh, the other item that you could potentially compare it to is lasers, which ignore 15% of armor and do minus 20% of shield damage on the smalls, and 60 and 20 respectively on the uh, other items. So plasma is better in every way, shape, or form. Up to, uh, yeah, up to, let's take a look here. It's almost 60% difference here. And the damage output for lasers, sure, it's between 42 and 71. And the large plasma cannon, in this case, is 48 to 83. So arguably, it is the better choice for total damage output, especially if you want to knock down enemy uh, armor. So why all of these armor plates, or at least the lack of armor plates? Well, armor is... A bit of a stickly target. Uh, the general consensus is, is that the more shields you have, the better survivability you have due to the regen capacity of your ships, especially with the shield capacitor, which increases shield regeneration plus 50. The additional armor for the Crystal Forge plate is a very nice addition. If you have the incremental technologies later in the game, or at least at the end game, you will be able to stack up your armor defense up to 90%, and it gets to very ridiculous amounts of total defense against any sort of armor penetrating weapons and of course if your shields are down your armor will still be up so it's generally considered to be better than shields because shields drop armor does not and especially when you have flanking ships or ships that are 
designed to take down shields like any sort of corvette with anti-shield technology then this general design is pretty much what you want to go for however if we do take a look at the best overall design using leviathans everything is pretty much kitted out with large enigmatic deflectors as well as a large animatic power core and due to the fact that the large animatic power core generates enough power it means you can drop one of them from the original design and actually add a large dragon scale armor as well this cranks up the armor on base down to 68 percent overall an exceptionally good design now i have mentioned that it's relative which which is the best battleship there are situations where you're fighting a uh, xenophobic fallen empire for instance with a xenophobic fallen empire they'll usually use kinetic weapons so with a lot of armor you'll be able to dissipate a lot of that damage which is where the neutronium or dragon scale armor comes in of course by that point you're probably should be looking at the incremental technologies that boost your armor up even more of course there is the leviathan's variant where you can replace all that armor with dragon scale and then it just cranks up to 90 percent armor and your damage output should be around 73 uh per cycle which is quite a lot and then of course you have the unbidden situation now the unbidden uh are the pretty much the only situation where you want to use giga cannons now giga cannons are great because they ignore 50 percent of armor and uh, do 33 percent shield damage and this is great against the unbidden because they have very limited armor and shields in addition adding nothing but kinetic artilleries does uh, adds a massive amount of firepower to your fleets just to knock them out of the equation especially with the range attached to it their disruptors should not be able to touch your battleships at, at all at that point of course uh, then there is the scourge variant and the scourge variant is the only one that uses two mediums rather than a single large as it uh, uses the broadside stern rather than the artillery stern to add two additional flak artilleries this is mainly because of their attack ships as well as the large amount of missiles that we're throwing in towards your general direction they do a lot of armor damage so you want to have a large amount of neutronium armor there uh, or dragon scale armor if that helps for you this is just a general overview of ship design there is a way to crank up your fleet side uh, your, your battleships even more if you go into the new setup when it comes to uh, creating a government a military dictatorship allows you to build a unique battleship per or at least a new ship per generation of leader and this ship is significantly more powerful than anything that you can field up to that point the bonuses are quite ridiculous I think it's a 33% bonus up to firepower as well as other relative items and the model will be bigger and you can only build one per generation but it adds so much and that does not even include any sort of leaders you can add towards your empire as well if you have an admiral for instance that uses the aggressive it increases fire rate by 8% that's another 8% on top of that for your battleships it is not to be underestimated on how incredibly useful these sort of items are i hope this was useful to you in terms of building a better battleship do you, is this the best ship in the game perhaps maybe not it really depends on how you're approaching things is this a giant white elephant yes absolutely without any flanking ships the battleship will not be able to target any smaller ships like corvettes or destroyers because of the way tracking works is maybe the, uh, the cruiser better who knows it's more definitely more flexible but the battleship has of course the use of the x size weapons which do a gargantuan amount of damage until next time take good care of yourselves and try not to build too many white elephants <laughs>